we are your hosts uh, Harsh and Darshan. What's in retake, retake. Okay, <laughs> fine. Hello everyone, welcome to Squeeze Sessions with Gal Gal. Uh, I'm your co-host Darshan. This is my friend Harsh. Uh, we are your co-host for this podcast and uh, we are from Gal Gal. Gal Gal is this fintech app which helps you manage your money better and simplifies your finances. The concept of this podcast uh, came to us when we were building this app and we realized that people have a very unique relationship with money. Someone who is experiencing money or earning money in their late 20s, in the early stage of their career might experience money differently from someone who is in their college. And we realized that money for me might be different, money for Harsh might be different and money for you, it might be completely different. So the purpose of this podcast is to basically get people from different backgrounds and discuss money, life and everything in between. So Harsh, uh, how are you doing today, bro? Good, Good to man. see you. Good to see you. How have you been? Good, Good man. Yeah. So I think finally we can kickstart this journey to bring people yeah. from different types of backgrounds. We hope to bring, you know, a vast audience, share yeah. tips, tricks and their journey, uh, yeah. their life lessons and keep it casual. This will be a safe space, relaxed. And yeah. I think it's going to be but actual mazaar hai to see the optimism around the country harsh like the whole explosion of this term digital india and you see people using like smartphones everywhere nowadays and people like engaging with like these different fintech apps or different digital uh, apps or platforms every day and so easily i think uh, it's amazing honestly like the way this whole digital india wave has taken off correct i think thanks to our government and pushing the India stack, pushing the whole digital cashless economy and also the smartphone penetration, the internet penetration has made life much easier. Yeah. We're lucky. Uh, I think that day we were just talking, right? You went to the airport without your Aadhaar card and what was that app again that you used? So it's DigiLocker huh. and I went to the airport with uh, without my Aadhaar card and um, I basically just had to show a copy of it on my DigiLocker and it was accepted. So uh, the whole digital wave in this country has made it very convenient for people to like, you know, function, I yeah. feel. Another example, like, you know, I went to play football the other day uh -huh. and um, over there, everyone was paying with UPI. So I also paid with UPI. I didn't have my wallet with me. Bool gaya, kya? Yeah, <laughs> I forgot my wallet and um, then I had to, had to take a rickshaw home. And um, the rickshaw person was an elderly man. So I was thinking that will this person have UPI? I have wallet. So uh, I was like, hai, chalo, let me just go with it. Next uh, time, pay for a gal gal. Don't make that <laughs> <yeah>. mistake. <laughs> so I went uh, and then the rickshaw person, ko, once I got dropped off home, I asked him that, like, Bhaiya, mujhe aapka UPI ID de do agar hai. So he was like, uh, Haan, UPI hai. So he very proudly removes his smartphone. Um, and uh, I was quite like, like you know happy to see like this person who is in his L like late 50s perhaps and he's like happily using his smartphone which wasn't the case few years ago few years ago when you ask someone about a smartphone it's like a luxury it's a luxury product now people are using smartphone almost everywhere and over here like he probably opens his upi app he goes to his profile section and he opens the qr code and he's like, yeah, Lijay, yeah. Like, so, so interesting fact is we're the world's second largest uh, inter uh, smartphone consumers actually after okay. China. So we have 1 billion smartphone users, which is huge, right? So it, yeah. gives, it gives a rise to all these digital companies. And because we have 1 million smartphones, there's so much consumption yeah. from Netflix, OTT, Video games, mobile games. I mean, that's so what much, we right? saw at this Global Fintech Festival. I remember uh, you were telling me. So, guys, Global Fintech Festival basically is, you can say it's like the IFA of uh, fintech in our space. Me and Harsh uh, attended the Global Fintech Festival, which happened in the Geo Convention Center in Mumbai. And um, there were more than around 30, 40,000 people. 60,000. 60,000 people. Reported. Yeah. Six, yeah. So me and Arun, my co-founder at Galgal, Gal, we had attended the one previous year. Yeah. And this year they really killed it. Like, I think triple the size of last year. Uh, In just one year. One year. We were honored to witness the live keynote speech from the RBI governor. Yeah. And it was inspiring, right? Them seeing them launch 
so many initiatives hearing the success we have made in the whole finance ecosystem and how he plans to take this global yeah. so indian the india philosophy now is not to copy the west we are actually implementing uh, our technology stack across the globe and yeah. i think uh, it's going to be a great journey 100%. for all everyone in the country to see this potential that we have built yeah like it was quite inspiring to see mr nandan nilekani like launch the new upi products right and these upi products don't only cater to the tier 1 section of our country they cater to the tier 2 and tier 3 areas of uh, the uh, india uh, yeah. of our of our nation so these upi products i feel uh, are going to really empower the people in those villages or in uh the sections of like the country where there is low internet penetration with upi voice and uh we can use even upi without internet yeah. now so sms a, sms based yeah so it's amazing and yeah. but this also leads to a question that now with so much uh like you know it's with so much ease of spending money don't you think that like, people will just start spending a lot like because now they used they used to be this thing where I'm seeing my hard cash right in front of me, and every time I give you like say uh, some cash, I'm seeing it physically like go away from me. So mentally, I can feel that loss. But when spending money has become as convenient as just pushing a few buttons, like if I'm texting someone or I'm sending a UPI, it's the same sort of action, right? Like I'm just moving a few buttons on the screen, and I've sent the money. So do you think that people are not realizing that they might be spending more than what they should or like what's your take on this So I think I agree with you right it's become very easy to consume everything whether it's shopping or spending money uh I think it has become challenging to keep track of your finances you're constantly scanning paying uh you're basically buying now thinking later yeah like you are not make sometimes you're not making mindful decisions i think if you can create a good habit with your lifestyle mm. and create go- a good spending pattern for your needs and your family's needs or your friends ke sath whatever kharcha that you can reduce it's great and i think consumerism has doubled in the last 5 years uh, again i was reading some data and i found that and i think we spend so much time on our phone right do you, i think i've increased my screen time i was just seeing it that day and just besides work it's like 4 hours a yeah, day i don't know pulls you yeah what is your screen time i don't even know sometimes <laughs> like so i have this thing where i've put limits on some apps that i want to use okay uh and um, i every time like end up like crossing those limits <laughs> so it asks me like you know okay your limit has expired like you know uh, do you want to extend for 15 minutes First I got into the habit of like extending it by 15 minutes and now I've just gotten into this habit of like cancel limit for the day. So that shows the power of these apps, right? These apps like hook you to them and you are it's like a tri- like a normal trigger of being bored can just pull you back on these apps and then these apps show you something which like the world has to offer. Like there is some company selling you something which probably you don't need, but because you bought something related to that product in the past, they understand your buying patterns, and now they want to sell you the similar thing. You feel that yeah, this you are the sort of a person, and you want to buy these things because you bought them in the past. You end up buying it because I mean it's just two clicks away. This has given birth to so many companies that wouldn't have like gotten a chance to even flourish. Yeah. like everything's online now right food delivery se leke your grocery shopping and i think important point is mindfulness and that's what we our mission with galgal is also right like creating a good budget and sticking to track yeah. and you know savings is important as well but talking about you were talking about screen time and apps and i think the reengagement of all these companies is uh very insightful to see right like If you bought a shoe, you'll see that next day or but, some but other brand. But how do you yeah. be mindful about these things? Because like you know this, these feelings of like you know oh I want to not miss out like the FOMO the, uh, concept where like you know uh, my friend has something or like the people 
uh, in like in my neighborhood are doing something or like you know I'm seeing this some person who I don't even know on the internet just because I follow some celebrity or follow some sort of person is doing this I want to do this so it's it's like a double edged sword like it's helping the whole GDP of the country grow because so many businesses are starting up right True. but at the same time if you're going to get in a loop of like taking credit or uh, just like buying something that you don't want or like getting into this habit of hoarding goods or starting habits that you don't necessarily need or they don't have a direct positive impact on your life then how do people even realize it so i feel consumerism has to also come with some sort of balance yeah. where like if you don't find that balance you can get in sucked into this whirlpool where you're just buying things you're taking debt you're buying things you're taking more debt and fast forward 5 years you're in a very difficult position to get out of so as everything right technology is like a double edged sword you can use a knife to cut vegetables you can use a knife to kill someone so i think you have to be quite mindful and mm. i feel like certain practices that kind of take a zoomed out view away from your life where you're too caught up with something but you need to like reflect on some things can really help and uh, i think you're doing it right recently you went for this meditation program you were telling yeah. me yeah. Uh, how was that experience it was good like i needed to so get some time off yeah and i've been reading a lot about meditation as yeah. a practice uh, mm-hmm. from you especially and <laughs> yeah. uh, i couldn't make up my mind yeah. to do it and luckily i found a course uh, by uh, it's called happiness program this is the art of living thing right yeah, yeah. and they had a course in bombay and there was a 3 day event mm. and funnily enough one month after that mm. i didn't end up practicing it mm-hmm. uh, I got caught up again in my daily routine. Life happened. Yeah. <laughs> and one fine day I started it again and yeah. I think because you brought up this topic right now meditation I I think the mental health and money is also a very important topic and finding balance in that because if you're not happy with your life you might be doing different sort of uh, habits nahi but you'll be doing different sort of activities that you know you're not supposed to do right yeah. so for me like because so i've been meditating for the last like 4 or 5 years i follow the isha school of thought and for me meditation apart from the whole spiritual like religious aspect of it for me it's like a gym for your brain where if you want to like build stronger muscles like you go to the gym right so if you want to get more control over your thoughts or you want to become a person who can just make more informed decisions because at the end you're processing all this data in your mind and if you're not able to process that data properly you might end up making some decisions that might not be best suited for you so meditation helps you with that it helps you recompose your mind in such a way that you are the one in the driving seat you're not getting swayed away by thoughts you're controlling your thoughts in a way you pick your thoughts like okay i want to focus on this thing and at the end everyone might have a different outlet someone might be into uh, sports someone might be into cooking someone might be into just going out for a walk you yeah. have to find your own balance i feel in like today's world because it's very easy for you to just get yeah. caught up with everything you want to pay your bills you want to uh, complete your assignments which are very important these are crucial but if you're just running towards a dead end then what's the point you use the word balance and right now everyone's talking about work life balance and 70 hours of work week yeah what's your take on that so uh, mr narayan murthy like you know made this statement right where uh, 70 hours is required for you to like build like a nation where he used examples of like japan and germany like post world war they needed to like really rebuild the nation So I feel um honestly it comes down to like things that you enjoy doing because right now we are working on a sunday it's sunday we are would you label this as work because it is right we could be spending time with our family or you, we could be out somewhere uh like you know spending time with our friends but we are here so it 
really comes to a point where you have to ask yourself that the things that you're doing at work are you really enjoying them because if you're enjoying what you're doing then you could probably do it like even in the middle of the night if because that's a part of who you are the problem is not everyone gets that freedom also to do work that they enjoy and love because of because the of hardship right correct a, a, It, it's really up to the person to pursue his passion and yeah. tough hai it's not that easy like, like a pursuing passion also could be a luxury or right yeah. kyunki i feel you know when people see sometimes when people say just follow your passion like you know even that can be dangerous because yeah. if you have responsibilities and you have things that you have to pay for sometimes following your passion might just compromise the security of you and your family Right. और वो चांस भी देने के लिए नीड्स टू बी समवन टू गिव यू दैट ऑपर्चुनिटी इट्स अ बिग कमिटमेंट आई थिंक 70 आवर्स लाइक इज समटाइम्स इवन लेस लाइक वी आर वर्किंग एवरी डे राइट या एंड आई थिंक टू लेबल द आवर्स एंड दैट्स वन कांसेप्ट वी आर नॉट डूइंग राइट नाउ राइट वी हाउ डू यू हाउ डू यू इवन लेबल आवर्स लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल इफ समवन्स वर्किंग इन एन ऑफिस फ्रॉम 9:00 टिल 6:00 हाउ मच टाइम डू यू एक्चुअली थिंक दैट पर्सन इज लाइक spending on proper working yeah because it's very difficult to calculate like if you're saying that okay i've worked for 70 hours like person i'm not specifically saying you but if the person has worked for 70 hours but has spent probably 2 3 hours uh, per day just browsing stuff on instagram how do you account for that वेस्ट वेस्ट इट इज ओल्ड डे या पूरा वेस्ट हो गया सी इज आई थिंक मिस्टर नारायण मूर्ति वाज ट्राइंग टू लाइक टॉक अबाउट अ कल्चर वेयर यू आर थिंकिंग अबाउट ग्रोइंग द नेशन और ग्रोइंग योर कंपनी और ग्रोइंग योरसेल्फ एज अ पर्सन एंड आई थिंक कमिंग कमिंग फ्रॉम हिज एक्सपीरियंस द यूथ लाइक अस नीड्स टू फॉलो हिज एडवाइस राइट ही इज गाइडिंग द नेशन इन द राइट डायरेक्शन अकॉर्डिंग टू मी everyone can have their own view yeah, but I that's mean, my personal view that you know he's a legend and what he has experienced and building infosys there has you know people are disregarding his statement and saying that oh it's not good for your mental health and all that but it's a very debatable hot topic and i think see everything can contribute to your work efficiency i feel yeah. because where mr okay i saw a lot of posts where people yeah. were like saying that if you have to work for 70 hours you yeah. have to pay us for 70 hours why don't you increase the salary according to 70 hours but i mean it's not about the work that you're doing at infosys maybe you are going back home and you have like half an hour to take care of your health okay you just go for a walk or you spend some quality time reading a book or you probably watch a youtube video for 15 minutes that will help you at work that 70 hours maybe need not need, need not be required just you completing office task if you use those 70 hours to improve you as a person which invariably will improve you at work is more beneficial i feel looking at it that yeah. way because and also i think you know people might laugh at us that these two young founders are talking about 70 hours work week and they've not achieved anything but i think it's a good discussion to have in every organization right now right see mental health i feel like is a very important topic it's a yeah. very sensitive topic and yeah. everyone has is entitled for their own view like, yeah. you know they can probably have a perspective that might completely differ from a different person's perspective so i feel it's very individual yeah you have to do something that suits you True. and your position in life and your phase that you're going through uh but 70 like you, if you are doing something if you're working somewhere and you want to grow your standard of living you want to have a better life according to me i think 70 hours is fine college days we would, st- would study more than 70 hours <laughs> so yeah i mean uh, apart from mental health even physical health i feel like you know it plays a key role on the way you think because you can chase your work you can be working very hard but if you're falling sick regularly or your back hurts your feet hurt that is going to directly affect your productivity at work so people might feel that oh why should i take care of my physical body i have too much on my plate i need to 
earn money i need to pay bills but if you are going to be running on overdrive and eventually after 5 years or 10 years that engine is going to collapse is it even worth it rather than you spending probably half an hour to 1 hour once a day or once in two days taking care of your health you're increasing the life of that engine which is your body so what's your take on physical fitness like you know you think people sometimes overlook the importance of physical fitness because mental fitness ka mental health ka to bahut chal raha hai aajkal matlab mental health pe focus karo kisi ko ye mat bolo kisi ko wo mat bolo khud ka suno correct physical health fitness ka you think that's been overlooked nowadays nahi i think like i have two opinions on this one is super important right you have to take care of your body go walk pe jao yoga karo you can also do stretching at home you just can just do push ups ghar pe yeah, you don't do, need to go to a fancy gym fancy gym yeah body weight exercise sports like i play personally i play football yeah. twice a week as well yeah uh since school days and i've never left that habit uh my take on fitness is i think now it's become very crucial with also social media you're seeing these new fitness influencers you're yeah. seeing uh, fitness influencers promoting products like 2 3 years back i we didn't i don't know if you knew but i never knew about this ice therapy mm. that people are sitting in frozen buckets to recover yeah. so it's not date there's so much information on physical fitness and influence now yeah. in the country with sports it's great and aajkal to you see those uh, fitness trackers and stuff they have become so cheap now yeah, yeah. i mean uh, it's still a luxury but compared to what they were years ago the prices have dropped a lot yeah. and so many new brands have come up where you can track your mental and even mental health uh, basically huh. like you know what levels of stress you're having and um, like your sleep routine like have you got enough sleep because uh, completely digital completely like you, digital it's like an you, app or how does it work so there are multiple uh, devices like you can go super premium where you even have like rings boat like thing launched a ring recently yeah so you yeah. have rings you have like these bands uh there's this one company that is uh, inserting like a chip in your arm right? yeah so uh, there are a lot of new startups so basically there's a lot of focus that has to be given on your physical fitness because you can be happy for 5 years in the hustle mindset but then if you suddenly are going to fall sick and that's going to compromise you i don't think so that's worth it yeah you rather have a more sustained way of working that is also going to not only enhance your monetary aspect of your life but also your holistic aspect of your life where you're healthy your family is happy you're making better use of that money as well so health is wealth basically health is wealth yeah <laughs> so darshan what have you planned with the squeeze session with gal gal so we have planned a lot and uh, but the plan is also a little unplanned because you saw how the podcast went like we started talking about us we started introducing ourselves and then we started talking about our country and how like india is growing and the whole consumerism aspect of it whether it's good or bad and uh, then we started talking about like how we're going to balance this whole thing out so i think this podcast is going to be like a balance where we get people from different backgrounds different walks of life so understand their perspective on uh, how do they handle their yeah. life and how do they manage their money and how do they like go through this life dealing with stress dealing with emotions dealing with so many things that affect us day to day so the concept is to just understand and squeeze the most out of people so that we understand that everyone's unique in their own way everyone might have an approach that is best suited for them and there is no right or wrong in this like you just have to accept that everyone's unique and just adapt to like uh, yeah. whatever is best suited in your life but we'll keep it casual me ko script mat dena that these are the questions to ask the next nahin, guest script script nahi rehne wala hai so guys this is going to be a completely raw and uh, natural podcast where we are also learning so yeah thanks guys for listening to me and darshan and thank you bearing with us for the first episode uh, we hope to bring you some exciting few videos ahead and many more to go we promise you that we'll be better than our first episode uh, i know this one was like little amateur but we are 
I'm professionals in the fintech space but <laughs> amateurs in the podcast space so bear with us we are going to be better for sure and get you great content stay tuned yeah yeah chat mic nikal de mai <laughs> mic nikal de bas ho gaya <laughs> a lot of like we see 70 hours per week i think we're talking too much of 70 hours. yeah yeah let's switch to yeah, another let's topic let's switch to another topic yeah. how do you think by the way we spoke of the 70 hours uh, will this is we'll be, see in the final out to 70 hours became too much right Yeah. How long was that? About 5 minutes. So we cut it to 1 2 minutes for. <laughs>